wood ceiling beams with carved stone caryatids. Look it up. Boarding <laughs> every third beam. Acoustics were perfect and when not in use, the screen could disappear through the floor to the bowling alley below so that there could be room for a stage production. The richness of finishes and comfort of the theater was of utmost importance as this was the industry that many of the guests were involved in and was near and dear to WR. The South Wing contains a pantry and essentially a commercial kitchen since the staff at the Hearst Castle had to be prepared to serve anywhere from two to 200 guests, sometimes without much of a heads up. Julia Morgan had most modern stainless steel equipment installed but still allowed for an element of whimsy with brass bird faucets and tile trim around the sinks even in this commercial kitchen there was something cool to look at it was really nice of her to do Mm -hmm. that for the hard-working staff Mm -hmm. the second floor holds a library a lobby bedrooms and two duplexes and the third floor and towers contain more private quarters and also elaborately furnished and designed so i mentioned before how many rooms there were and each one had or has a variety of all the antiques that Hearst purchased so that it's really kind of a revolving museum. W.R. and his family were first able to enjoy the main building Christmas of 1926, although the house could not have been considered complete. It was enlarged and remodeled and evolved as a museum and residence depending on the artifacts appearing and disappearing and being rearranged. The theater I discussed was not complete until 1930. In fact, what Julia and W.R. called the Recreation Wing was not started until the end of 1929. Because of its importance, the theater was the first room in that wing to be completed. So although ground broke on the main building, the big house, in 19... April 1922, it was really an ongoing project for the next, I don't know, another decade, at least, maybe a little bit more. So outside, there's a carefully designed and landscaped site that perfectly complements the centerpiece that is the house. And there was actually not a separate landscape architect. Julia was in charge of designing the surroundings. But WR was the one that suggested plants and proposed having different color schemes depending on the season. So it's cool that there was as much input from him as there was and it was good that they could work well together but i was really impressed that given a site of of this size that and and an architect who already had a lot of work cut out for her that she she just she still did it all you know and had to travel from san francisco but you know she's doing this house she's having Mm. to deal with the shipping of the artifacts and calling people for materials and i just I, i just can't believe that she was able to do all that really with i mean i'm sure she had some help but still like she really managed kind of every everything i mean and if she was working on other projects at the other time at the same time rather i don't think she was she wasn't okay mm-hmm. so she's basically devoted to him for 20 yeah years there was something that took her away but like not until i think the late 30s when when tune was the next house that she worked on for i don't know if that was for him it was well it was started by his mother and he inherited it and then it was like three separate architects yeah that worked on that yeah that looks like a storybook oh man that's awesome so right so the grounds included walking paths bridal paths and a zoo with lots of exotic animals with telephones thrown in for ease of communication so that wr would never be out of touch The architect got a shack, which served as her office on weekend visits and where she and WR could meet. So was it really a shack? Yeah, it was kind of a lean-to. Like there's a seriously? Yeah, it's sort of adorable, a little nugget like off the side of one of the buildings. Doesn't look very permanent. It's pretty funny. Julie designed an original pergola inspired by an 18th century example in Amalfi, Italy. It wraps around the hill for nearly a mile returning to the main house and is comprised of concrete columns with cast cross pieces featuring mythological creatures at at all the ends. On one axis between two of the guest cottages, two of the three, and sited on a lower terrace from the level of the main building is a formal classically inspired and giant pool dedicated to the god Neptune. This super fancy pool grew in size twice, ending up to be over 100 feet long and 345,000 gallons. It is enveloped by two marble colonnades with the facade of a temple at the center because really nothing else would have done it justice or honored neptune quite as well and you really just have to see this thing to believe it it it's 
it's really amazing. Her her designs for swimming pools, I may have mentioned this before, like she was quite a reserved woman. This is the, you know, silk blouse and suit lady with that looked like a cute little librarian. And she did these elaborate, elegant, very showy pools. And it was just sort of one against who she was. I mean, I the love whole... It. I love it. It was like an alter ego. The whole complex is just... We'll make sure to post pictures, of course, on Instagram so and cool. Facebook. Yeah. But, I mean, it just really just is pretty breathtaking. Mm-hmm. Just the sighting of it and um, the views both up and down the mountain are amazing. Across from the temple at the end of the Neptune pool is another water feature. This is a raised basin where mermaids and sea creatures frolic below a Venus rising from the sea. These sculptures were not antiques, but requested by Julia from French sculptor Charles Cassou. His statues weren't put in place until 1931, almost 10 years after ground was broken for the main house. As impressive as what you see of the pool above ground is, what you don't see is a crazy engineering triumph. Think of how challenging it would be to design a pool of this magnitude on the side of a mountain in an area prone to earthquakes. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a good idea to me, actually. Right? Or you'll have a wave pool every once in a while. The pool is hung by reinforced concrete beams from a concrete retaining wall in such a way that a seismic event would allow for movement but not cause it to crack. It's fed by natural springs and uses a complex filtering system to keep the water crystal clear. Pools were a big deal in California and to both Julia and WR, who was not satisfied just with just one pool. The architect created another one for him, smaller, but just as cool, if not more so. It's underground, beneath and between the two tennis courts and is lit by a skylight. The space is lined with tiny blue and gold tiles on the walls, floors, and ceilings, and features Greek key designs and sea nymph motifs. It kind of looks like a formal, hard-edged grotto. Since the water moves from room to room, but without the jagged rocks, it's just super formal. Um, so it's a multi-room. It's a multi-room swimming situation. Pool. It is. Wow. Yeah. And it's underground. It's, it's definitely my favorite. Yeah. It's under. It's totally underground. Holy cow. Yeah. Right. So, so we're still like looking courts, at the book over yeah, here. <laughs> the tennis courts are overhead, and they have these. I mean, the whole room is just these tiny little mosaic tiles with these beautiful, like, marble. They're sort they're of lamps. torchier, like. Lamp stands. And they have each of the ladders that leads into the pool is this elaborate scroll design in marble. And there's statues of nymphs and Greek gods. And the ceiling is coffered. And this has got coffered ceiling. With it's just painted with all with, these intricate, intricate yeah. details and stuff. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's pretty amazing. I love it. I would swim in there. Right. So while we drool at the pool. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Drooling at the pool. Moving on. Just as impressive as the pool was Julia Morgan's commitment to the project. She made 558 trips to San Simeon between 1919 and 1939, and that averages to about three weekends a month. So that's a lot of traveling. Working for WR for that long did not yield the payment one would expect. Her total take home was only about $70,755, right? I don't know what that is in today's money, but I'm thinking that after working on something for 20 years, like that just doesn't seem like a lot of money right so seventy thousand yeah. seven hundred and fifty dollars and 1930 is the equivalent of one million fifty seven thousand six hundred eighty four dollars so so it's not bad no not bad over 20 years so, what is that per year for 20 years mm-hmm. caroline's gonna calculate that fifty two thousand eight hundred twenty five dollars so a year that's a that's an okay salary yeah right you couldn't live in in, in san francisco on that now no, but no, back then but yeah then and the way i mean i don't think she was a big spender no she doesn't so, seem like she would be all right so wr died in 1951 the main building wings remained incomplete as did much of the landscaping many additional small structures were planned but never constructed The most unfortunate exclusion was the Great Hall, which was meant to connect the two wings or arms of the square U we discussed earlier, so that a courtyard, an enclosed courtyard, was created. The Hearst Castle became a California state park in 1954. In 1958, it was opened to the public as a state historic monument. These days, you can tour the estate and experience the splendor for yourself. 
there are no pool parties because the Neptune pool is being restored. However, if you do try to jump in, you will not be invited back. Hearst Castle is on the Register of Historic Places and has a higher designation as a National Historic Landmark. This site is environmentally conscious. I read about this and I thought this was very interesting. The Visitor Center, this is now, the Visitor Center is installing canopies in the parking lot which have solar panels on them. The intent is for the Visitor Complex to draw all of its power from solar units, which is not hard, surely, in a place like Southern California. They've also, and we've done this in some of the historic properties we've worked on, that the light bulbs have been swapped out for LED. Although the term green has become somewhat overused, the park's commitment to progressive environmental practices should be commended, I think. With all the cool tour options and possibility of accidentally falling in the Roman pool after restoration, I am for sure ready to plan my trip out west to see the Hearst Castle. I know. We should. I think we should do that. Yep. All right. (laughs) So since the construction of Hearst Castle would continue for over 20 years. There was a lot that went on in W.R.'s life. For starters, he and Marion remained devoted to each other, which is rather unique if you think about it. Uh, They were together, as we said earlier, for a little over 30 years. So a lot of biographers believe that Marion was really the love of William's life. Oh. Yeah, I know. It kind of warms my the cold cockles of my heart. They met when he was 55 and she was 21. So very May, December. Ew, wait, please. No, don't repeat it. I heard what you said. Okay. May, December? No, the ages. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So he quickly began helping out her acting career she needed work in hollywood so he bought a studio for her to be based out of she needed good press he ordered his papers so wait why why her i mean like did he see her as talented before he sort of fell for her or it was like yeah i mean she was clearly talented i mean she was in the zigfield follies oh when they met i believe in 1918 was when they first started meeting up he was always backstage because he was a stage door door johnny as we mm-hmm. mentioned last week did he meet what's his face sanford white and i was um, like hey buddy like well, they just both they would have been dead by the, the yeah he was dead by the, oh this is 1919 right yeah 1918 okay. so he was not that would have been funny though there's some discussion about whether or not marion was already auditioning for movies and that he mm. just kind of jumped in and helped her along yeah yeah it just it seemed it, I, I couldn't quite puzzle that one out but you know regardless either bought or started a studio which was called cosmopolitan pictures and then hired her he was paying her something like five dollars a week which was an extravagant amount of money for at that time uh, yeah an actress to receive Mm -hmm. that doesn't sound right though five dollars a week yeah was it a day possibly okay was it an hour (laughs) yeah maybe it was an hour no so he was definitely you know and then she ended up being one of the most publicized actresses of her time period, mm-hmm. and it was directly because of him, mm-hmm. because he was ordering his papers to write about her and publicize her movies and that sort of thing. Right. So the problem on the horizon for the couple was that Hearst was married. Even mm-hmm. so, following Phoebe Hearst's death in 1918, now Phoebe was William, uh, William mom. W.R.'s mom, mm-hmm. W.R. and Marion moved to California to the Hearst Ranch, which is the future site of wait where was his wife she was in new york possibly in san francisco she had houses in both places did she know yeah that it seems that yes she did because once they moved to california they were openly living together but he had had five children by yeah his wife okay so dang yeah so while they're, you know, at the ranch, they're, you know, entertaining a lot of the leading lights of Hollywood at the time. Clark Gable, Gene Harlow, Carol Lombard, our good friend John Barrymore, who was briefly involved with Evelyn Nesbitt from our past uh, episodes on uh, Stanford right. White. Right. Joan Crawford was in there as well. Of course, uh, San Simeon, you know, was sort of the epicenter of they're entertaining but davies uh also owned a, a mansion in santa monica so they Wait, she did yeah she did she eventually bought a mansion there so they would entertain there as well uh, and they would end up entertaining people like winston churchill charles Dang. Lindbergh, howard hughes oh my god george, george bernard shaw i wonder if that house is still there 
Is it this one? Annenberg Community Beach House. Oh, Marion Davies Guest House. That, maybe that's all that's left of it. Maybe the main house has been destroyed. It was uh, originally developed during the Gold Coast era of the 1920s by Hearst and Davies. The Davies estate featured, it's this all in mansion of 100 